My scripture text today comes from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 7, verses 18 through 23. Luke chapter 7, verses 18 through 23. The disciples of John reported to him about all these things. Summoning two of his disciples, John sent them to the Lord, saying, Are you the expected one, or do we look for someone else? When the men came to him, they said to him, John the Baptist has sent us to you to ask, Are you the expected one, or do we look for someone else? At that very time, he cured many people and diseases and afflictions and evil spirits, and he gave sight to many who were blind. And he answered and said to them, Go and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear and the dead are raised up. The poor have the gospel preached to them. Blessed is he who does not take offense at me. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. <clears throat> My message today is entitled, The Unexpected Jesus. The unexpected Jesus. In many ways, Jesus was and is expected. As a matter of fact, there's even a classic uh, Christian hymn that you may have heard of entitled, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Does that ring a bell to anyone? It's usually sung at Christmas time. It's not in our hymnal, uh, but is in a lot of other hymnals. Uh, and it's usually sung at Christmas time, talking about his first coming. Titled, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. <clears throat> and of course, the Jews were expecting the coming of the Messiah. They had been waiting a long time for Jesus' coming, for the Messiah's coming. Now, this was not an unusual thing for the people of Israel. They had been used to waiting on God. They had to wait 400 years while they were enslaved in Egypt before God sent Moses to deliver them and bring them out of the land. And similar, similarly, it had been about another 400 years since the last prophet Micah had foretold of the coming of the Messiah until Jesus came into the world. But as the scripture says, he came at the fullness of time, at the appropriate time. But many people were expecting a Messiah and hoping for a Messiah to come and deliver them from the bondage of the Roman Empire. However, Jesus was not what they expected. Jesus, on the other hand, was, is, and will be quite unexpected. Have you ever had something unexpected Expected happen to you in your life? Most of us have. 
you thinking things are going to go a certain way and they don't go that way. It could be good or bad. You know, things could turn out better than you thought or things could go horribly wrong. We've all had those experiences in our life. And I was going to cite some examples, you know, in my own life as I was preparing for this. But then I had an experience, an unexpected experience yesterday, which was just so bizarre, I just thought I had to tell you about it and use that example instead of the other ones. So yesterday, late afternoon, early evening, I was returning home after staying Friday night and Saturday with my mother, and I had stopped by the Mechanicsville Kroger to pick up a couple of things <clears throat> on my way home. Tanya and the family were still at the convention and wouldn't be home until tomorrow night. So I went in to Kroger, stopped, got out, went in to Kroger, got my stuff, went in the checkout, you know, just a normal day at Kroger, got my stuff and was getting ready to head out. And as I was headed out of the Kroger, a couple walked into the Kroger, a young couple, maybe in their mid-twenties. Now you're saying, well, Vance, that's not unusual. Lots of young people, you know, shop at Kroger. But let me tell you, this couple looked like they had walked off the set of a copper tone tan commercial. Had this been a beach wall, a beach Kroger, you know, at Virginia Beach or the Outer Banks, this would have been okay. But at Kroger in Mechanicsville on Saturday afternoon, I was not expecting a young couple to come in in beach attire. And when I say beach attire, the young lady was wearing a bikini. You know, and she, she had one of those wraps that you put around the bottom, but you know, that was okay. And she was, but she was clearly wearing a bikini bottom and top, and that was all she was wearing a pop other than she did have a Hawaiian lei, you know, one of those flower lays and everything. And like I swear, and the, both of these young people were like, you know, perfectly gorgeous. That's why I say it looked like they walked off a commercial set. And then if you thought that was the guy, he's wearing these like really, I don't know if they were swim trunks or just really short shorts, you know, a muscle t-shirt and of course he's ripped. <coughs> He's wearing, you know, uh, a, a leg, and he's got a crown of flowers in his head. And it looks like real flowers. It's only a crown of flowers and, and, you know, sunglasses, and he's ripped. And they just walk into the Kroger laughing and smiling on Saturday afternoon like they had just come out of the ocean. And I was just standing there with my bags, and I was just going... <laughs> I did not expect that. God bless them. I don't, I don't know what the story behind all that was, but they were quite an interesting pair. But it looked like they were enjoying themselves. The unexpected happens. And so... Going back to the scriptures, Jesus was unexpected. They were expecting a king to come and overthrow the Roman Empire. Jesus sneaks in in a stable one night. Jesus disguises himself as a mild-mannered carpenter for 30 years before going into a phone booth at night. And that's right. Before embarking on his ministry of itinerant preaching and doing good works, his cousin, John the Baptist, who had been called by God to prepare a way for Messiah, who had baptized Jesus and under the influence of the Holy Spirit had said, this is the Lamb of God who's come to take away the sins of the world. But now things have kind of gone rough. John's in trouble. 
John's in prison. And pretty soon he's going to lose his head. And so, you know, he's having a crisis. Was I really right about this Jesus guy? Is he really the Messiah? It doesn't seem like it's what he's expecting. And so he gets a couple of his disciples to go and ask Jesus and say, are you the expected one or is there someone else? And Jesus is like, well, look around. The deaf hear, the blind see, the lame walk, the dead are raised. Isn't that all the things the Messiah would do? And they were like, yeah, I'm the Messiah. Go back and tell John. You see, he fulfilled the scriptures, but he wasn't what they were expecting. They were expecting a king to come riding in on a war horse. Jesus twisted their expectations and rode in on a donkey. <laughs> yeah. Who would have seen that Jesus would win the victory over sin and death by apparently losing? It was a suicide mission. God's suicide mission. Escape was not his plan. He had come to die on a horrible cross to suffer physically, but even worse, to suffer spiritually as all the sin that ever was or will be was piled upon him. The people, they were looking for an earthly political savior. But as Jesus told Satan, when Satan tempted him and said, look, if you bow down and worship me, you can have all the world. The world is not enough. Jesus said, you shall worship God only and serve him. Jesus came and did what no one expected. And certainly no one expected him to rise on the third day, showing once and for all that he had defeated death and the grave, and that through him we might have eternal life and live forever. God is still doing the unexpected in our lives. I'm always surprised to see where Jesus will show up. Because let me tell you, he'll show up where you least expect him to. Bars, the dark corners of the internet, and people you don't like. Yeah, God uses all kinds for his purposes. Those who follow Him and even those who don't. Because God is always working. Seeking whom He may call to be in relationship. Because He's not willing for any to perish, but that all come to eternal life. And that's why He's patient. Because He doesn't like to see the destruction of the wicked. It brings Him no pleasure. So He waits. And He seeks. And he calls us to be his ambassadors, his servants, to join him in the unexpected work, in that unexpected journey down the road of life. If we follow him, follow him wherever he may go, he will lead us, what does the scripture say? Beside still waters, but also through the valley of the shadow of the death. We don't know where the path will go, but we can know this, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort us. No matter. And finally, he is unexpected in his return by the world. The world assumes that Jesus at best was just a nice guy 
who was unjustly executed by the Romans and is dead. And those, then there are those who regard him as a madman or those who don't regard him at all. But he is coming again. And the scriptures tell us what? He will come as what? A thief in the night. When you don't expect it. No one knows except the Father. No one knows the day or the hour. He will come when we least expect it. Let us, let him not catch us sleeping. You know, he told the parable about that. The servant been on the journey. I mean, the master went on the journey and the servants, you know, got lazy and didn't keep watch. And the master showed up at a late hour unexpectedly. Well, they were in big trouble. We don't want to be that. Jesus is coming. He may come today. He may not come for a thousand years. We don't know. But I know this. One day, all of us will stand before the throne of Jesus. And every knee will bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So let us live like it could be today. Because Jesus is still the unexpected. That's the good news for today. Thanks be to God. I pray that Jesus will show up in our lives this week and every week. We're going to sing our hymn of response. Hymn number 238, The Solid Rock. Paradoxically, Jesus is both unexpected and yet is also our solid, constant rock. Let us stand as we sing hymn number 283.